The Amazon rainforest covers an area the size of Australia. It is host to half of all species of life on Earth, many of them lethal. It is no place to be lost alone. In the jungle, there are countless ways to die. This is a true story of a fatal decision that betrayed a friendship and turned the adventure of a lifetime into a deadly struggle for survival. Bolivia, South America. In November 1981, three backpackers traveled to the remote outpost of Azriamis in the Amazonian jungle. Yossi Ginsberg is a 22-year-old from Israel, fresh out of national service with the Israeli Navy. The reason why I came to South America was one reason. It was very clear to me. I wanted an adventure. I was very, very naive, bright-eyed, open to the world, everything is possible. With Yossi is Kevin Gale, an experienced traveler. He's a 29-year-old photographer from Oregon. I was traveling, I had an agent in New York, and I was sending my shots to him. So I had motivation to try to have some shots published. And of course I was thinking uh, maybe I'll publish some in National Geographic, but it was primarily for myself that I was doing this. With Kevin and Yossi is Marcus Stamm, a 29-year-old school teacher from Switzerland. Marcus and I had been uh, great friends. We'd been traveling off and on together for eight months. He was going through a crisis. A relationship had just broken up and he was falling apart. And he just uh, wanted to escape. The three friends have spent months backpacking around South America. But now, a charismatic Austrian, Karl Ruprechter, has drawn them to Azriamis with the promise of a real adventure. He will take them into the uncharted rainforest to meet a lost tribe of Indians, never before seen by Western eyes. Oh, lousy map. No detail, the whole of Bolivia in one map. Look and mark the field. See that? That's where we are now. We cross the Tuichi River. We cut the trail for four days and we end up at the village. And then you see the real Indians. There was an X with a pen. Carl said, the Indians are there. We had no reason not to believe him. He told us that he was a geologist, that he had been in South America for 15 years, that he'd been in the jungle numerous times. He was an expert in the jungle. So I had no reason to, to doubt his word. Listen, it's gonna be tough, but we'll go in together and we'll come out together. Agreed? Yeah. Okay. Good, let's do it. As we set off from Asayamas, we started seeing, uh, you know, like things were changing and we weren't exactly the same people already. And I think the reason for it was that we knew we were leaving civilization behind and this is it, just the four of us. The friends follow their guide into the rainforest. Ahead of them lies a week-long hike to the Indian village. From there, Carl has told them they will return to civilization by rafting down the Tuichi River. It was a different world, and we could hear animal life all over the place. Monkeys were howling, screaming, and I could see birds, numerous varieties, all over the place. 
It was like a picture. We don't have food because Carl sensibly saying we wouldn't carry, you know, like tins and stuff. There's lots of game, so we'll hunt. That's what you do in the jungle. All we have is rice, beans, and salt. That's all. The rest comes from the jungle. But what we kill is not so pleasant. Carl waves it in the end and screaming and you see the wilderness in his eyes. He's a, his element. He loves it. You've killed it. You've murdered it. You can't do that. What? There's no law here. This is Bolivia. You. You take care of him. We're going to eat well tonight, Kevin. Hey, Marcus, pick up my gun. Marcus would, wouldn't bring himself to eat. We kill him to eat. Marcus thinks, can we save that monkey? It didn't make any sense, because we were in the jungle, we were in this environment, and those things happen. And he was just oversensitive about everything. You know, Carl is not so tough. What would you know about it, Yossi? You were never in nature like this before? Well, I was in the military. Yeah, that was the Navy. This is the jungle. Where is this damn village? <laughs> oh, this is bad, my friend. This, you gotta be careful with this. You see the sauce? They will all open up to get in the end, then you've got no skin left. And your feet are kaput. Guys, I'm sorry. He said it's tremendous pain. We didn't believe him, because it was part of it. Okay, now he's complaining, he's always complaining. He's always finding a reason to complain. Malka should rest. One of you could go now with me to make contact with the village and then come back to Malkus. The village. You said three or four days, Max, to get there. It's been more than a week now. Marcus could be here for days. Hey, you don't believe me? You think I don't know where it is, huh? Nobody's leaving anybody behind. So, what do we do, huh? It wasn't fair to Marcos to continue. I wanted to continue. If Marcos hadn't been there, I would have continued. It wouldn't... There's no question about that. We should go back down to the river. We should build a raft now. Marcus can take it easy on the raft. What do you know about the river? I know the river is back that way. Mm -hmm. Ah, screw it. It's your choice. Forced to abandon their dream of visiting the Indian village, the adventurers head back to the Tuichi River. Now they will raft out of the jungle. My dream had been uh, shattered and I was very upset. And I knew I, I wouldn't have another chance. So I was in a pretty foul mood. I was very upset because my dream, you know, to make contact with the Indians, my, that dream was gone and, you know, it was mainly because of Marcus. But ahead of them lies nearly a hundred miles of river before the nearest settlement and the airstrip home. Immediately we knew it's a mistake. Left! Left! Go left! What left? Easy car Run. on, good line. We're on the car right. line, we're, Roll deep. we're right on deep. course. Roll deep. In the rainforest, car was the authority and rightly so. But not anymore, because on the river, Kevin saw immediately that Carl is no authority. It was ridiculous, because Carl didn't know how to swim. It was very obvious to me that Carl didn't know what he was doing in the raft. And I, I let him know. I told him that he was doing everything backwards. Listen to me, we do okay. Carl, nobody's going to drown. Jeez. I think we are okay. okay. Maybe it's my imagination. 
So now there was like fighting on the raft. They were fighting because Carl said, you know, we have to pull to the left. And Kevin said, nonsense, you have to go to the other side. Come on, pull you! Whoa. Carl would scream and curse. Don't listen to me, look what happens, huh? Oh. What I tell you? Crazy, on a river like that, you know, like no cooperation, no friendship. It was hell. We're pretty close to the canyon. Huh? I told you, you gotta forget the raft now. Look, we are here. Almost the Cape Town River. It's the Mel Paso San Pedro Falls. He called us and he said, down from here, it's a canyon, and there's no way, if you're going in, you're dying. There's no way out of it. So two days on the river and you had enough, huh? You don't believe me. We gotta walk now, you understand me, Kevin? Look, we walk around the canyon, we stay close to the river. A few k further on, there's a small mining village, Curiplaya. Curiplaya is halfway to San Jose. We get to San Jose, you're as good as home. Carl said, if you want to leave, let's walk. We wanted out. You know, this was a misadventure. It wasn't fun for me either. And Kevin was the only one that was not happy at all. I wanted to continue. You know, we can, the worst comes to the worst, we'll bounce off the rocks and continue. And we'll just, do, we'll just continue with our plan. We'll stop before the San Pedro Falls, hike around the, the falls with our equipment, build a new raft, and then, then we continue. We can't let Carl take the river away from us, you'll see. I mean, think about it. Why did we come on this trip in the first place? Carl promised us an Indian village, which was supposed to be the highlight of the whole thing. We never saw it. Was it ever there? All we have left now is rafting on the river, and how long have we had on it? Less than two whole days. And no way is Marcus coming. He'll drag us down. We could do it. We could go it alone. You know, it was a moment I just didn't know what to do. I mean, in my guts, I wanted to go with the, with Carl and Marcus. But I already had this relationship with Kevin, you know, like Kevin was my hero. Kevin, I, you know, I chose Kevin. You know, like I, in that split, I chose Kevin. He was my man. So I stuck with him. I said, okay, you know, I'm coming with you. I felt Marcus was in a very bad place, bad spot. I certainly didn't want to hurt him. I didn't want him to make him feel worse, but and I, I couldn't help the guy. I mean, I, my best buddy, and I couldn't help him. We had this uh, wall between us. But you promised. We'd go in together and we'd come out together. This is different. Don't you get it? I don't want you to come. You're not coming. <laughs> so this is it? Yeah, I guess it is. In retrospective, how did we do that? How, how can you split in such an environment, you know? I know you'll be all right. Let's get moving. I'll see you soon, Marcus. Huh? I'll see you soon, Carl. Ah, you'll see. La Aventura. <laughs> Still haven't had enough, huh? You're full of it, Kevin. You're gonna be fish food to pay off you. It was heart wrenching. It was like a betrayal, and it was a terrible feeling. I really felt ashamed. It should take little more than a week for Carl and Marcus to hike out to the nearest village. But now Yossi and Kevin face the dangers of the river alone.
Kevin and I went into full excitement into let's the, let's the adventure begin. Uh, a new chapter, no more four people. Kevin became the authority and I accepted his authority. I, I guess part of it was an issue of age, but other part was that I didn't know Reavers. All right, get it dead straight. Go. Keep in time with my rhythm. Almost immediately we entered a series of roller coaster waves. Hard your side. It was a different river. Battle hard! It's becoming much more intense. You know, like the river is getting narrow, the water swifter. And certainly it was a bad decision to continue. That was a major uh, mistake. We're just shooting straight into white water. Both of us were lying on the raft. That was the only thing we could do. Suddenly, it was clear to me that nothing that can prevent us from colliding with this huge rock that was approaching. And that's what happened, we hit the rock. All right, Yossi, I want you to listen to me now, okay? We can't stay here, all right? So I'm gonna jump, okay? I'm gonna swim to the shore, and I'm gonna throw you a line. I don't want him to jump. And I, I, he tells me why he's jumping, and his plan is completely suicidal. But in that stage, I think not only that it's suicidal, he, he kills me. Captain, don't leave me! All right, Yossi, throw me the shoes and the machete! And I saw the raft teetering back and forth on the, on the rock. And then at the same time, the raft moves, and I hear that terrible screech. The mass of water just... Yossi! Yossi, hold on! He entered the rapids, and I saw him go through two or three rapids, a couple drops, and around the bend he went and I didn't see him again. It's like huge pressure on my chest. And I can feel, I can feel that, you know, like the power of the river. I'm shooting at such a high speed and deep, deep under the waters. It's like the pressure surmounts. I cannot breathe. I feel this is it. I'm exploding. I'm dying. And I knew this is my end. After a long time in the river, I was spat again into the surface. And that terrible canyon is behind me. How did I pass it? I just don't know. I just have no understanding of it. But I was on the other side. By a miracle, Yossi has survived. But now, as night falls, he is separated from Kevin by more than two miles of river and impassable canyon. The next morning, Kevin starts to search for Yossi. I decided to go down river and look for Yossi. Yossi! I was responsible for him being there, and I didn't know if he was alive, if he drowned, or if he was hurt. 
As Kevin works his way downriver, Yossi struggles back up the canyon towards him. Kevin, I'm walking up the right bank! Early morning of the day after this tragedy, this disaster, I got this scratch, this metallic scratch. Behind the rock, there's a small pool. In the middle there, the backpack is waiting. Yes! When Kevin made this bag, he said, give me everything important to you, because this is the life bag. He tied two empty things to have it flow. The life bag contains vital supplies, a flashlight, a waterproof poncho, a few ounces of rice, and crucially, the map that promises Yossi's best chance of survival. I put the backpack on my back, and now with a new spirit, I climbed up thinking that it's gonna be easy now. Kevin and I get together, and it's gonna be over. We've got the equipment, it's gonna be a good story. After another day of searching, Kevin is less than a mile away from Yossi when he comes up against the canyon walls. He has no choice but to turn away from the river and climb up into the jungle. I knew that the San Pedro Falls was before me and I wasn't about to, uh, to swim through that. So I decided to leave the water and hike into the jungle. Now it's clear that when I was walking behind the ridge or the bluff in the jungle, Yossi was, was walking upriver, not very far away. Friends continue to look for each other for days, surviving on little food and almost no sleep. They're unaware that every step is taking them further apart. The only thing that kind of uh, kept me going was the notion that Kevin is running after me and he will follow me and things will be fine when Kevin comes. Kevin has finally worked his way back to the river, but he is now miles downstream from the canyon and Yossi. After five days alone with no food or equipment to help him survive, he is exhausted and starving. By this point, I realized my chances were very, 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 very minimal. I mean, I thought I was going to die. So I had one shot, that was to make it to San Jose. Kevin's only hope is that the current will carry him down to San Jose. I was no longer thinking about Yossi, I was thinking about my life. I didn't have anything left. So now I was trying to save my life, and uh, that's what I did. That night, the fear was so big that every minute, every little thing I'll hear, I'll just jump and I'll start looking around to make sure there's no animal coming. I just clearly heard some branch breaking. Something is moving. I, I knew I'm not imagining that something is moving near me. I look with the flashlight around. But the moment I put the beam on, I see the face of a jaguar. I 
I had a cigarette lighter and I had a can of repellent. And I remember that I saw that in a movie that you can actually set the repellent on fire. flame died and there was no jaguar you know like I, I managed to scare him I sat there for the, the rest of the night and you know I started crying and screaming and trembling it was consuming that that fear I just realized, I knew it, Kevin. Something happened to Kevin. Something happened to Kevin and he's, he probably died. I took the map out and I started studying it. Suddenly, I remember Carl told us about some camp, the gold mining camp, about four days away, up river. Kuroplaya. So now I had like an idea. I have to walk, and looking at the map, it was very hard to work it out, but I thought within two, three, four days maximum, I'm making it to the camp. And once I made it to the camp, I'll have a trail to follow, and I'll make it out. Yossi heads for the mining camp at Kuriplaya. From there, he will pick up the trail to the village of San Jose and safety. And here I am singing out loud, my chest open, enjoying the scenery and fully trusting I'm going to make it. Then I suddenly discover a tree and I saw clearly it was actually a cat with a machete. Kevin? And then it all makes sense to me. Actually, Kevin was doing the same thing. That was, in you, I would be trying to go to Kuri Playa. So I'm sure Kevin is there before me. I kept on walking along that trail and it started being a bit strange because the marks weren't as clear as before. Deep in the bush, I had no sense of direction. And now I was stuck with this little trail and hoping that it will lead me back to the river and to the camp. And then after hours where I'm already despaired because, you know, it took me away from the river, I see this footprint. It's not an old footprint. I see that footprint in the mud and I realized this is a hiking boot and there's only one person in the world that could have left that footprint. It's Kevin. Kevin! This footprints wasn't Kevin's, it was mine. In all these hours, half a day that I walked, I actually, I actually walked in a, in, in a circle. This trail didn't lead me anywhere. After hours on the river, Kevin's condition is critical. He is barely conscious and has no idea if he has passed San Jose or not. All of a sudden, I see a canoe. The current is swift, so it's, it's taking me down the river in quite a ways. And then finally, they turned their heads and they began waving their arms. 
like this, like downriver, downriver. So I let go of the branch I've been holding on to, and I began swimming towards the shore. When they approached me, they asked uh, two, uh, two questions. They asked me if I was lost, and they asked me if I was hungry. It was kind of funny. They told me that they, they went hunting in this area twice a year. I mean, it's literally one in a million. It was just pure luck. I had been saved, but I, I didn't know if Yossi was alive. But I just had this feeling that Yossi wouldn't give up. Yossi pushes on towards the old mining camp. With the rice gone, he's surviving on little more than scraps of fruit scavenged from the jungle floor. I just made it a rule. I'm not going to lose the river again. Suddenly, there was this opening along the river, and I saw the hut. Go, player. I was so hurt. The disease on my feet, this fungus, reached my hands as well, and my hands were raw as well. And I felt that not only the pain that was so excruciating, but I actually remembered how Marcus had that. And I remember that I actually didn't believe him, and I thought that he's a wind. And for a second I was thinking that maybe what has happened to me was <laughs> directly related to the way I behaved to him, to my friend. And now I know, because I suffer myself. Yossi has no choice but to press on and hope he can make it to San Jose. The rain was merciless. It was so tough. The night came and it was very hard to escape. What happened is quite unbelievable. I didn't know of that phenomena, but uh, literally the jungle started collapsing. It took me seconds to understand, but by the time I understood, it was too late. It was a flood, and the river rose. No, no, no! No! By morning, the flash flood has subsided, but Yossi has been washed far away from the river. By that time, I was really in bad situation. It was the 15th day of my solitude. I couldn't start a fire, there was no sun to dry, and no food, and the rain, and wet. But things were clear. 
I just had to stand on my feet and keep on walking. Because I knew now there's one, one thing, find the river. Just days after being rescued, Kevin has made his way to a Bolivian army airbase to try and convince them to mount a search. I went to the office of the commander and I spoke to him. And he said if a gringo, a traveler, was, was lost in the jungle, that he, he didn't have a chance. Si el fuera tu hijo, or tu hermano. ¿Por qué no te a los Estados Unidos? ¿Dónde tu familia? A pasar las fiestas navideñas. Pero hay una persona perdida en la selva. I hear that noise, and I listen to that noise because it's so foreign, and I start realizing it's an airplane. I'm saved, and I know everything now. I know also that Kevin is in the plane. I know it's a, it's a plane after me. I know it's Kevin there, and I'm just jumping on my feet, and I'm running, and I'm screaming. Kevin! 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 You know, as soon as I realized this airplane was just uh, oblivious to me, I just collapsed. For the first time, I was defeated. You know, I felt defeated. I knew that so much hope, and they didn't see me, and there's no way they could see me. Flying just a few hundred feet above in a Bolivian army spotter plane, Kevin shares Yossi's sense of defeat. I realized we couldn't see much. And I asked him to fly lower and he, he wouldn't. He said it was too dangerous. And on top of that, we were flying in a straight line. He wasn't following the contour of the river. It didn't have a chance to find Yossi this way. I was going crazy. It was very, very frustrating. Like every day was very important. Time was the key element. And every day that passed, I knew it was another day that Yossi's chances were diminished. They were getting smaller and smaller. Yossi has now spent 17 days alone in the jungle. Since the floods, he's found nothing but rotten fruit to eat. He is feverish and weak with starvation. I was famined, I was diseased, I was injured and weak. I started realizing that I don't know what's going on anymore. I'm, maybe I'm, 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 I'm becoming insane. I thought that Yossi wouldn't give up, so I began thinking about the next steps. And I found a fellow named Tico, and I asked him if, if he could take me up to Tuichi. And he told me that he can, but he has to be back within three days. So it's better than nothing, so I said, fine. Something bit me, it was a strong bite. And I can feel it's like a termite, an ant. And then another bite, and then another bite. And then they, I attracted a, a nest of termites. And there were like hundreds of them, and then sounds of them, and I couldn't escape. There was no way I could escape. 
But the, the worst horror was the ray of light hitting a red carpet, you know, like everything around me. Five, six meters around me everywhere. It was all red and moving. My body was like a colander. There was no place in my body that wasn't bleeding. And I just had to escape now. And I stood on my feet and I kept on walking. I told them that I want to go as high as possible, up the river as, as much as possible. I just kept going up and up and up. I didn't want to stop. The jungle is just the jungle. On my knees, on my on my elbows, I'm crawling. Suddenly I started seeing a few things that I recognized and it was actually Kuri Playa. I went all the way back to that deserted mining camp, but the mining camp wasn't there anymore. The flood took everything. feet weren't feet anymore. They were like two lumps, two chunks of blood and pus. I gave up. I prayed to God, just allow me to die. All I want is to rest. Let me die. Podemos seguir. Mira, el río está creciendo de nuevo. Hay rápidos arriba. Siento. No podemos seguir. I knew that was it for Yossi. It would take weeks, if not a month, to get back to the jungle. And there's no way that he could survive another month in the jungle. And I just felt this this heavy, heavy, heavy feeling and this uh, sense of loss and this terrible sense of guilt that I'd caused his death. I clearly heard a buzz, like a, like a bee or a wasp, and it's like coming closer and I can start hearing it circulating my, my head. So, you know, I'm already in like the, the zone of like delirium. I'm just trying to get rid of that wasp because and it's so strong that noise. In a certain point, I think it, maybe it's trapped inside the mosquito net. And I raise my head and I just try to get rid of that wasp. And the buzz is in my ears. And as I raise my head and there's no, I don't see the wasp. But when I turn my head right there on the beach, I see shades and people.
I mean, it's like at that stage, I'm not, I, I don't know what's going on. Just, you know, like Kevin, like a flesh, he's already there and I'm collapsing in his arms and we just hold each other and hold each other. It's now just emotion. We cry and cry and cry. I couldn't believe it that, that we'd found him. If he would have been upstream, just a hundred yards away, he wouldn't have heard, heard us. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have seen him. I mean, it's literally one in a million. <laughs> my life was spared. I mean, I know Kevin saved my life, but it was a miracle. For sure, it was a miracle. I think that Yossi saved my life, because if, if uh, we hadn't found him, if he, if he would have perished in the jungle, I would have had a very heavy burden to bear, knowing that I caused his death. Because I put him in the situation, and I was, I was entirely responsible. So I think that's how I see it. Yossi and Kevin were safe, but they had yet to find out what had happened to Marcus and Carl, who they'd left to walk out of the jungle 20 days before. It was a shock to us to discover that there was no trace of Marcus or Carl. Of course, when I realized that, that Marcus was lost in the jungle, it was a very, uh, very heavy feeling. Kevin went back into the rainforest immediately to search for them, and he couldn't find anything, any sign, any track. It just evaporated. The Bolivian army also mounted a search and discovered that the Indian village that Carl had marked on the map did not exist. They, they told me that Carl had a history of taking people into the jungle and leaving them. It happened more than once. They were very, very familiar with Carl, and they said he's a troublemaker, and he found refuge here in Bolivia. And I was shocked. Over the following years, both Kevin and Yossi mounted searches for Marcus, but no sign of him was ever found. I don't feel guilt about not taking Marcus with us. Then and even now, I feel that it was the right decision not to allow him to come. But. I always thought then, and I probably do occasionally now, that if I would have gone back with, with Carl and Marcos, if we would have gone back together, that it would have ended differently. It was a life and death issue, and, and we, we decided for him that he should go out. Yeah, we did think, both Kevin and I, we were thinking that what we are doing is more dangerous, if this is an excuse. We, we were thinking that. Still, we made that decision for him, and he never came back. Kevin Gale is now a fitness instructor and photographer living in Israel. He is married to Orna, an Israeli he met while searching for Marcus and Carl. Yossi Ginsberg is now a writer and a motivational speaker, and has done much to preserve the Amazonian jungle. He lives in New South Wales, Australia,